Hey guys, it's Jen from JCT Rustic Homestead. Hopefully I'm not chopping off my head too bad in this shot, but um, today I'm going to at least start working on a sign for me to use for any kind of craft shows I might go to or directional sign, like if people are coming to shop for plants or something. Um, I had this idea a while ago. I've taken little pieces of scrap metal and spray painted them with uh, chalkboard paint. If you saw my video maybe a week or so ago about how should I reinvest farm income, I purchased a little bit more chalk paint and this is the sign that I'm going to make from it. I do have to do some cleaning up on it. I got to take that sticker off of the bottom here and then this side is kind of gunky and I'm just, I brought out the Dawn dish soap and a sponge and I'm going to clean that up and hopefully get it dry enough to where I can paint it today and it actually does um, dry fairly quickly but then I have all kinds of different widths of painter's tape because I would like a border around the edge. So if you're looking for, for a unique idea for your signage for any kind of markets or shows or whatever um this might be for you depending on your style i just found this piece of metal i don't even know what kind of metal it is or where it came from there are some holes from it being riveted or screwed into something but I, that doesn't bother me i don't care it's also not completely flat but it'll it'll serve its purpose so let's get to work on cleaning it up i'm just gonna try dawn dish soap first and uh sponge with a little bit of a scrubby on it and we'll see if that can cut the grime on it so far the sponge shouldn't scratch it that bad and even if, and if it does it's a scrap piece of metal i'm painting over it it will be just fine well it cleaned up pretty easily so um that's pr a plus uh I did do some straightening out around the edges with a pair of pliers, but I think I'm going to find a hammer and just try to get it a little more flat. Um, I did say it doesn't have to be perfect, but I would like it to look reasonably nice. So I'm going to try to flatten it a little more. Uh, it bends pretty easily, but it's hard for me to judge how far to bend it. So if it springs back into place or something. So I think I'm going to find some concrete and a hammer and see if I can get it to work. All right, I chose a couple different hammers, but I wanted to find the biggest surface area I could find for a hammer. So I chose this heavy hammer, mall, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that's because I want it to be able to distribute the weight when I hit it. And with a regular hammer, you might um, make more hammer marks. So I'm hoping by choosing a, a bigger surface area I will be able to not make hammer marks. I'll be able to I'll be able to flatten the metal. If you don't have a heavy hammer, that's totally fine. Use what you have. Um, this is just what I have access to, and it might not even work. All right, it's about as good as I'm gonna get it, which is fine. Um, it's not perfect by any means. I might stand on it a little bit and try to flatten it out some more but part of it is I think that it's been twisted enough that it's just not gonna be straight and that like I said that's fine it was probably ripped off a building but it did allow me to um, hammer down some of the edges that had curled up that I couldn't get with the pliers and hopefully I got most of the I might have to use a, a wheel or something to get a little bit of the roughness off just in case somebody other than me is handling it. I don't want them to hurt themselves. And uh, I did make some hammer marks because I wasn't square on the the metal. But like, like I've said 14 times, it doesn't have to be perfect. So while this is still drying, I'm going to clean off the sticker. And hopefully it'll dry soon. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to find a towel. Well, that sticker really did not want to come off. But... I finally, I found my utility knife and I ended up using the blade from that and got 95% of it off. But in the process, I am so excited. I found my painter's multi-tool. I have like worked the bejesus out of this thing. It even comes with a flat hand and flat head and a Phillips screwdriver bit that you just put in the end of the thing 
and I, it, I really did not think I would use it as much as I have, and I do. Like, you can open up your paint cans, you can tap them down again. If I have to put paint in a corner, um, or tape in a corner, I'll use this edge to kind of get it in there better, or to even, like, cut the tape a little bit, or the paint, if it's like a latex paint. I've just, I've used it a lot, but that's my little plug. It's a hyper tough, the brand's hyper tough, but I don't really know what it's called. Probably like a painter's multi-tool or something like that, but it is a workhorse. Now, why do I have so many widths of painter's tape? Because painter's tape is more useful than for just painting rooms. What I do with it sometimes is um, I've made burlap curtains and really it's just drop cloth, a painter's drop cloth piece of fabric and I put like a grain sack, I think it's called a grain sack design on it with some stripes and I actually put painter's tape on the fabric and paint between the painter's tape. It works great. It's not perfect. It's not going to give you that those perfect lines, but it looks good anyway because it's kind of rustic. So I get it in different widths so I can have different width things. For this piece, I want to have chalkboard painting. Let me put it up a little bit. I want to have chalkboard over most of it but I'm going to leave an edge of this metal and to do that all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the width I want which I think I this is maybe an inch and a half or something it's not the super wide one um, it's probably about an inch and a half so I think that this is the width I want if I wanted a wider width I would just use a wider piece of tape or if I want narrow I'd use a narrow piece of tape but I think this is the width I want for the size and all I do is I line it up with the edge mostly and this edge isn't perfect it's kind of scary but I'll make it work and I just tape along the edges all four edges and call it a day are my edges and one thing I should have mentioned is that if your edges aren't straight on your piece that you're working with your tape won't be straight so if if this edge up here goes like this your paint's gonna go like that if there's not too much of a difference you can definitely fix that with the tape and your eye but if you are super particular, you may want to make sure that your width at one end is the same at the other end and then accommodate for it. Because you could always just move this tape line in further depending on the line of your piece. And then if there's a gap up at the top, I would put my straight line of tape here. Say it went like down here. I would put my tape here and then just fill up the gap up here with tape. Or if you want a less border and more um, chalkboard, totally go for that. It's, it's up to you. I just want to make sure you realize that if, even though that you're you're following the edge up here, it's if it's not square or sh straight with parallel to the other end, you're not going to have a straight paint line. But now I can paint this. It's dry enough that I can take my chalkboard paint and go ahead and paint it. And my spray can is almost out anyway. So once I get the new can, it should go a little smoother. And I just want a nice coat. I may have to go over this two or three times. So this is the first coat of chalkboard paint, spray paint. And I, I do see some over here. I need to touch up. My can ran out and I thought I would let it dry. How do you know the paint is dry is by 
it turns from like a shiny glossy almost look it looks wet and then it turns this matte color i don't know if you can really see it but um i made sure to get the edges really good i see my tape came up in one place but oh well uh, and then I'm going to do at least one more coat and see how that looks. Do maybe some touch-up spots where I can still see some metal poking through and flip it to the other side. Okay, so this is my blackboard piece. It's, I took the tape off the edge and you can kind of see where this is blackboard and then I still have this metal edge. And there are already holes in here, but I might have to drill them out a little more. And then we, Colton helped me put together the frame for it. I'll be honest, I started with some scrap two buys and it failed miserably. I was gonna upload this video yesterday and it didn't work. So I found some scrap two by fours. Um, the other ones were two by twos and they were ripped up. Anyway, it was a nightmare. Um, so what I did, and, and I'll bring you in closer, but I'll explain it first. My sheet of metal is about 24 inches by 44 inches. So what I did is I added an inch on each side and then two by fours are actually one and a half inch wide. So I added the inch on each side. So 44, excuse me, 24 plus two is 26 plus an inch and a half on this side and an inch and a half on the other side. That would be three inches, so 29 inches. This top board is 29 inches. And then 44 inch length on my metal piece. I added um, actually more like four inches, but yeah, four inches because I had the perfect size already. Two two by fours were already 48 inches, and so that's just what I used for the sides. And then I put some two by fours for feet on the bottom and I can anchor them down with sandbags or concrete blocks or something. So I'll bring you in closer and you can see that real quick. All right, so this is my frame. It, the top and the bottom boards are 29 inches and then the, the vertical boards are, were 48 inches. And then you can see on the bottom, I just put two two by fours down for feet. We did put these little eye hooks on either side and hopefully it'll focus we did put these eye hooks on either side so that I can hang the sign from them I just need to get some S hooks I had planned to stain this so you could see the final product but um, that didn't work so um, I'm actually going to paint it like a white chalk paint color. You could stain it. You could leave it as it is. It just depends on how you want your piece to look. And then this is my sheet of metal. That is larger than I realized once I got it put together. So this sign is a bit bigger than I had kind of anticipated. But I think it'll be a good thing. It'll stand out if I'm at a show or a market or something like that. And I can use chalk paint and it will be good. All right, guys, so here we have our finished sign. I wanted to show it to you outside, but it is super windy, so there's no way you would have heard me over the wind. But, and you can hear everything falling on the roof. I didn't do any fancy corners, I just cut them to length. So I had a little bit of gap around it. Colton had these screw eyes that we could put in the bottom of this board. And then wire hanger use, let's see if it can focus. Wire hanger use number seven, I think. I used them as an S hook to, with these, the holes in the, the metal already and hooking them in. And it turned out fairly level, which there's nothing about this is perfect anyway. So I can use this as a chalkboard sign. It's like this on both sides and i'm pretty excited about it it turned out really nice it's kind of large but that's okay i can always make a smaller one someday so if you guys enjoyed this video please consider subscribing there should be a button in the lower right of towards of the video or check us out at jctrustichomestead.com or our facebook page we will also be having a plant sale may 9th i think um, I think in time for Mother's Day, but I'm going to go. <laughs>
before the wind takes me out of the garage even. So hope everybody's having a great day.